It is time to jump onto practice. I'm going to show you how I create a monster based on game mechanics. I have a simple platform game prototype here. There is nothing special to the playable character's movement. It only walks, runs and jumps. I have a monster that acts like a bumper. When you fall on it, it propels you higher than you can normally jump. When you approach it, it attacks you, but it first has to anchor into the ground. When you get away from it, but stay relatively close, it follows you. And when it gets in range, it anchors into the ground again to attack. If you move far away, fast enough, the little beast will lose sight of you and it won't follow. It is now time to put a face on that little thing. I'm going to do that with traditional media. I have pencils, felt-tip pens and markers. I recently moved back to pen and paper to avoid staying on screen all the time. It prevents eye pain to some extent and I feel like it's easier to let your thoughts run free compared to when you're using a computer. The monster has to serve as a bumper, so I know that I want it to be round on the top. It has to be squishy, a bit like a jellyfish. I also want it to be cute, so I'm going with some kind of small dog or teddy bear. I still want to share the whole design thought process though, so let us bounce back to the idea of what a bumper is to the actual core function of the monster. It can either be some form of flat surface that gets propelled by a spring, or it can be some round form, a bit like jelly, um, that gets squashed down and that then propels you up in the sky, which is what I'm drawing here. In both cases, we can design a corresponding monster or enemy. In the first case, I'm making some kind of knight that's holding a shield. Or we can think about the guards in the arena who are holding the platforms in Breath of Fire 3. They could just throw you in the air whenever you fall on the platform. In the second case, I'm drawing some kind of blob that just gets squashed down whenever you fall on it and that then morphs back into its original shape, propelling you in the air. And obviously, whenever you squash it down, it becomes angry, or maybe it becomes happy and starts following you around the map. Maybe it's a blob of the masochist type. In this example, we are starting with the function of the monster, and we have seen how it could work mechanically speaking, either be a platform with a spring or some kind of blob. Now we're going to apply two principles of monster design we saw in the previous video. We are going to define our monster like any other character in the game. And we're also going to find real world animals that could serve as a reference. Here I am designing the monster for a very small game, maybe a mobile title, a web title, or a demo to show to a publisher, for instance. I am working pretty fast, so I am just putting down a few characteristics. I want the monster to be cute, I want it to have a dangerous form where it can attack the player, and I also want it to be round. I'm also thinking about another technical constraint, which is that I want it to be easy to animate, so it shouldn't have too many limbs. There are a few more characteristics that I didn't write down on paper because they are implied by the design. The monster has to stay on the ground, and it has to anchor in the ground, in a sense, you've seen that in the game prototype. So this is something I have to keep in mind when I'm designing it. I've had three ideas for real-world animals that share those characteristics. A bear, or a teddy bear, a wolf, or a dog, and a hedgehog. We can think of a lazy bear, a bit like Winnie Pooh, that anchors in the ground and waits for the player to come around him, we can also think about a wolf or a dog that would just sit and slip or guard a certain area of the level. And the hedgehog can just anchor and raise its spikes to hurt the player. I'm making a few sketches to represent the monsters I'm trying to create. I'm drawing the idle pose first and then I'm drawing an angry version of the monster. All three beasts have a slightly different body type. The bear is a biped. The dog has no arms and kind of no legs. It's going to slide along the floor. And the hedgehog is a quadruped. To ensure that they are easy to animate, I am building them out of simple shapes. I'm also breaking the design down into a few components that are cutout animation friendly. 
For instance, the ears of those characters always sit either behind the body or in front of the body, so they can work as separate sprites that you can animate on their own. When I'm done with the bear and the dog, I already know that I like those kinds of designs, so I spend very little time with the hedgehog just to have some kind of proof of concept for it. Now I know that I want to go with the teddy bear kind of monster because I think it's really the cutest of the three. Later on I'm going to change the design slightly so that it's a mix of a mole and a bear, a bit like Diglett the Pokemon. In the next video we are going to take that concept and to draw a few more frames and sketches to define ideas for animation, for poses, for the way it's going to work in-game.